you know, of course, there's a lot of nervousness when you are meeting the president. And uh, we not only the core segment of education, but we are also able to fulfill some of the core industry requirements. Uh, the best part was we got an opportunity to present our business, our work, our impact to her in like two to three minutes. So happy to see that she remembered. Like you change your tech stack, your team members, the people you work with, the segment you're working towards, your product. Put change, karo, the output changes. everyone to yet another episode of IRE Talks podcast powered by GIBS BS Business School. But we have something different today. As you all know that everybody has the right to good education and also the right to a good decent job. But as we know not everybody is lucky enough to get all these opportunities to study, to be able to work. But whenever there are problems in society, whenever there are problems in, uh, with individuals, it could be anything because of non-availability of resources or sometimes even because of some of the other form of disabilities or maybe because of some form of special abilities because of which probably you don't have access to the right education or work. But then whenever there are some issues, there are always some or the other superheroes who come to your rescue in some of the other form helping individuals, helping the society in their own ways. So we have today with us none other than two of our superheroes, Ms. Akshita Sachadeva and Mr. Bonnie Dave, who are the co-founders of Tressel Labs, Kibo as seen on Shark Tank. Hi Akshita, hi Bonnie. And uh, first of all, thank you so much for accepting our offer to be here and uh, for giving us that opportunity to host you. And I'm sure our viewers are already aware and they must have already uh, seen you on Shark Tank and they must have uh, witnessed your pitch that you had made in front of the sharks. So uh, we are very excited to hear your story here and uh, though we've heard you on Shark Tank but then we would want you to please share with us uh, how your journey has been. So probably uh, before we talk anything about Tristle Labs and before we talk about your product Kibo, uh, could you please share with us some uh, insights about how it all began as in what you were doing before Tristle Labs and then probably we'll talk about the journey of Tristle Labs and Kibo as well. So if you could just uh, let our viewers know. Sure. Uh, so for me, I, st I was studying computer science uh, back in 2014, 2015. And uh, in 2015, while I was a third year college student, I started working on a college project. It was a hand glove for the visually impaired that had a camera so they could just point and it would read what's written over there. It had obstacle detection sensors so they can just move around and it will give a vibration to help them dodge obstacles. Um, though as a curious engineer, it was a college project until when I met this young guy, uh, he's a, he's, he was studying at National Association for the Blind in Delhi and he used the device and he, he's like, I want to talk to my dad about this. So he called his dad, his dad was in a different city, he's like, dad, some scientists have come to my school, they have built gloves for all of us and now I can read, I can navigate, I can walk on my own. His dad was super shocked, like what is he talking about? And he just turned around like seconds later. He's like, Didi, when can I get this? And honestly, I did not have any answer to his question. I just uh, told him, uh, you know, I'll get back to you. Because for me, it was a college project. And that was when, when I came back home, his question really stayed with me. And I decided to use, you know, my technical skills to be able to bring a difference in his life and not just his life but millions of you know students or uh, working professionals who are visually impaired I mean the challenges that they face so can technology you know solve some of them and I was lucky enough to meet uh, my co-founder Bonnie at the pre-incubation center which where I applied after my college to be able to bring this dream into a reality uh, I had college placements like while I, I was studying and I had to decline all of them to be able to you know get to this. So maybe Bonnie can share his part of yeah. his side of the story. I was a curious kid, uh, a mechanical engineer wanting to do masters in aerospace and get a job at a, a world class aircraft manufacturing company. That was my supposedly career trajectory. Things changed for me 
during my college uh, there was a course where we had to do community engagement so i started volunteering at a blind school during my engineering and uh, for the very first time in my life i saw braille books like those are this big hefty braille books difficult to carry around and uh, i started comparing it with the way i had access to content matlab main koi bhi book leke i can borrow my friends notes and get access to content like this but those kids were limited by that information so then as a curious engineer i built a college project which would convert a digital text into a braille output built and braille is essentially a six dots which through which the entire abcd can be written so i built that took that prototype back to the ngo and we played a small game with the kids there so i would enter a character on my laptop and ask the kids to guess ki kaun sa character hai batao because they were learning braille and that interaction for the very first time in my life gave me a sense of fulfillment for the work that i had done this was not rocket science but it was meaningful enough for that kid at that point of time and this feeling stayed with me by the time i graduated uh, our final semester which is an industry experience for 6 months i had two options whether to go for my internship at hal hindustan aeronautics or go and join this pre incubation center called digital impact square which picks up students who are in their final semester or recent graduates and gives them opportunities to become like mentorship and all these things to become social entrepreneurs so i chose to go with digital impact square because somewhere deep down inside i had that feeling that if you are able to build something uh, which is value adding in someone's life that gives you the greatest sense of satisfaction and i was 22 uh and uh, then i took that leap of faith and applied there that's where i met akshita and our team members and i think the journey journey began the I, the genesis of tressel labs started in nashik in maharashtra at that center that's that's very interesting so i think uh, both of you in your own different ways found your own uh, you know inclination towards yeah. uh this business that you started so uh, if you could share more with us um, about kibo and about uh, your own entrepreneurial venture and where did you get all that inspiration so i think in your own individual ways you've told us that what is it that you know uh, hit you inside but then if you could share more with us about your entrepreneurial journey how it exactly began and probably after you met how did you uh, begin this entrepreneurial journey and start kibo what was the idea uh, of getting into entrepreneurship and starting kibo so uh, i mean when we met in nashik uh, it was january 2017 and we decided like as engineers the first thing you do when you see a problem is solve it <laughs> but we had to go through a journey of unlearning to transition from engineers to entrepreneurs and the first lesson that we learned was put all your assumptions together and go out in the market so what we did was we had lot of assumptions uh, how can visually impaired people, you know women cook how do visually impaired students study how do they work at office and to validate those assumptions we traveled five different cities over the first six months met almost 150 plus visually impaired individuals all the way from early grade learners to people pursuing phd working at a bank working in a government job and you know working as a professor and we were trying to understand what is that one thing that we can solve that will make the most impact and that was when we uh, in this journey we met this young girl named dipali uh, she was a brilliant student till 17 years of her age when she had cleared her first semester of college right when uh, she lost her eyesight within a week and her family was completely taken aback uh someone told you know you should go and learn braille so she tried she tried learning braille for the next 2 years but if you are you know late blind it the learning ability to learn braille you know is is less and she had to spend next 3 years trying to get admission in a college university that could cater to her needs but was denied admission in most places finally ended up getting admission in an open university got printed books from her college and had to wait for 4 to 6 weeks just to get one book 300 page book audio recorded and when that was when we met her back in 2017 and we asked her so like how will you how will you work how will you study is like um, i don't know 
and for us it was a complete shock like when she goes to her office when she goes to work how can she expect her official documents to come to her in braille or audio so there had to be a solution that can help people who go laid blind to continue with their life whether it is education or employment and that's when we figured out the challenge that we really wanted to solve yeah and that's why we built kibo uh, which basically in a nutshell is a one stop solution that allows you to do four things uh, you can listen to the text translate and listen to it in the language of your choice uh, digitize it in searchable accessible format file so if you pick up a scanned pdf file uh, kibo makes it searchable uh, as well as accessible for screen readers uh, which are which a software which visually impaired people use to read uh, i mean use computers so listen translate digitize and the fourth part audio ties means you can upload a pdf and download an mp3 or scan a book and download it in mp3 so not only does it help end users like individuals access content independently but it also is started enabling institutions like schools colleges universities public libraries to provide resources so that they can create content in an accessible format for these individuals so we have now have uh, visual impaired professors who are now able to assess the handwritten answer sheets of their students independently uh, all the way to uh, visually impaired individuals who have cracked upsc and are now uh, sub collectors in districts and now they have so earlier they had their own personal keyboard with them and now they have it in their offices and now so this is led to a public sensitization also oh, how does a visually impaired person use a computer oh how is he reading this document let me go and see so that i say that entire uh, sensitization has uh, trickled down into a movement of inclusion and now even the government of india has uh, accessibility guidelines in the national education policy promoting inclusive education in colleges so i think uh, we also consider ourselves as lucky to be the torch bearers and a part of this entire movement about around inclusive education and uh, Kibo being at the helm of it, so yeah, that's our small little journey of how we started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's really uh, very interesting and uh, very uh, you know exciting for uh, anybody to hear about as well. In fact, uh, we uh, got to know that uh, you know Kibo is now in the Indian Parliament Library, yeah. and I think you had a chance to meet the President of India as well. So, how was the entire experience? How did it feel? And in fact, uh, you know, how does this entire uh, experience of being an entrepreneur, how does that come across, if I may ask? I'll start with the last question. Uh, entrepreneurship, you know, there are many times where, uh, you know, my juniors in colleges say, why you have done entrepreneurship, I have to become an entrepreneur, what do I do with the idea? So, uh, the only thing that I don't want uh, is to be, uh, for entrepreneurship to become the next engineering <coughs> in a sense ki uh, just because every other person around you is an entrepreneur i mean there shouldn't be a fomo because chalo as engineers i'm an engineer myself we tend to acha the h is uh, itne mein sell hoti i can make it cheaper that's the first idea i know how it gets built i'll make it cheaper and uh, i can start my own company that initial excitement stays you can you might even as well build that thing but who motivation if the why of your is very transactional so 6 7 mahine tak wo motivation rehta and then you will because entrepreneurship never comes with a disclaimer that this has financial risk involved with it <laughs> financial and emotional risks involved with it and uh, so you shouldn't simply start because you think that this can be made cheaper or ha ye main kar sakta or simply because i just want to put on a linkedin ki main co-founder hum of xyz company i think the reason the passion and the motivation should be something much more bigger kyunki aage chalte things are going to be tough you may be two two friends starting out this company but what happens uh, when things turn south ki there are misunderstandings you so there are lots of things that the entrepreneurship journey tells us the good and the bad part about entrepreneurship is nobody tells you what to do like agar soche to mujhe nahi pata ki kal subah uth ke kya karna hai 
which you can take it as a good ki you don't have anybody to tell you what to do and as well as a tricky part ki kya kar rahe ab uh, so i think it's it has its own pros and cons entrepreneurship it's very demanding uh, but you need to enjoy this entire hustle that people call it. if you're enjoying that part so then entrepreneurship yeah you can take that leap of faith as we did so that's about entrepreneurship uh talking about the parliament uh, library when we set up so parliament library wanted to become inclusive they wanted uh, which we feel is a very strong uh, effort that they have done at the topmost level at the in the country that they are taking a conscious effort to become inclusive and uh, through some consult- consultants they had reached out to us uh, because they not directly to us they asked an ngo uh, which is kind of a think tank in this inclusion space on what are their recommendations of products that they can have in their library to become inclusive and they recommended kibo and then they reached out to us so which is a testament that you know the product has is adding value and people are recommending it as well uh, to others so that's how we got uh, uh, a call from the parliament saying that we wish to have kibo at our library and uh, wha- you need to come down to the parliament and set it up in the library as well uh, which we were uh, naturally happy you can uh, we'll visit the parliament as well and see it in person so we went set it up uh, even met the honorable speaker uh, om vila sir there he had come for the inauguration for the library so uh, while it stood as a great example Uh, that also enabled more and more institutions ki agar parliament library is able to take that decision to become inclusive why not us so now that uh, reference from the parliament is also enabling other institutions to become inclusive so that's about the parliament library and akshita got an opportunity to meet the president of india two times within the span of 10 days so i'll let her speak more about it. <laughs> i mean if i i mean i still get goosebumps when i think of that uh, moment um so we got an invitation where in um, 25 women entrepreneurs across the country were selected for an interaction with the honorable president of india on 18th of january so that's when i mean of course there's a lot of nervousness when you are meeting the president and uh, Uh, the best part was we got an opportunity to present our business our work our impact to her in like 2 to 3 minutes and i i guess i still feel so happy about those minutes of my life when i was really talking to her about the work that we are doing and the good part was she was so humble she was actively listening what each one of us said she was asking questions she was you know adding her comments I think um, that's that speaks a lot also about the president of India I mean her you know being down to earth her humility the way she thinks of startups and entrepreneurs like us to you know contribute in the nation building and I was lucky enough to meet her again on 26th of January so that was when uh, the president hosts an at home reception at the uh, par- pres- I mean Rashtrapati Bhavan just after the republic day parade and there are few selected people who are invited for that at home reception i was one of them and when i saw her and i told her you remember we met just 9 days back and she's like yes i wish you so you know so much luck and best wishes for your business and i was i was so happy to see that she remembered <laughs> i mean and just behind her i could Uh, I mean so everyone everybody was in together I was also able to meet the prime minister of India the president of France who was the guest at uh, the Republic Day parade and I mean I cannot forget that day <laughs> it's it's been super amazing and the way uh, I think the country is promoting entrepreneurship uh, startups like us it's a big you know uh, testimony and we have also seen like just how boni mentioned about the uh, parliament library setting an example for inclusion for public libraries we are now working with the rural development department in karnataka to set up kibo in 2000 rural public libraries to set you know to make them inclusive for people with disabilities where not it just not does does not cater to uh, persons with blindness in those villages it also caters to the language and literacy gap that exists in those communities so kibo is going beyond what we built it for and that's something that uh, you know really brings us joy
That definitely sounds amazing. In fact, the whole experience of meeting the president two times sounds <laughs> really surreal. And I'm sure uh, this um, this in itself speaks about the kind of work that you've been doing and the presence of Kibo because you're already in the uh, Parliament Library. So I think we already can understand how big uh, it must be. In fact, uh, you've also been to Shark Tank. So how do you think? I mean, if you could tell us how was the experience being at Shark Tank and uh, you know how how it has it opened doors or how does that feel? after coming back from Shark Tank. Okay, so if I were to do this in one words, before going there we felt overwhelmed. Uh, after coming out of Tank, like today, we are really happy that, you know, of the decision that we made to really be there. Um, so, I mean, if, we, if I were to walk you through the journey between over feeling overwhelmed to the feeling of happiness, it was like, you know, you have seen some people on TV and then you are standing right in front of them pitching your business. We have done it like multiple times over the last six years, but that was very different. We were talking to them, we were explaining our business and I think the kind of industry experience that they bring in, especially in terms of their networks, their connections, um, the business insights, the way they were able to, you know, see fine value in our work, see how we can, you know, make this big and they were also happy to partner with us in that journey so when we were uh, i mean at the end of the episode we got a deal uh, from piyush and ronnie and of course their network their mentorship is what we are really excited about and just within like one week of the airing uh, we got some 200 plus b2b leads all the way from publishing industry to banking to corporates who really wanted to leverage our technology beyond you know for uh, a tech, tech for visually impaired but can our technology power their systems power their businesses so i think that's what we are most excited about that that lens that we were you know being looked at of uh, how kibo is a product for visually impaired now it's a technology product that can power businesses educational institutions and you know made make the world a little more inclusive so it's you see our journey uh, if you look back and reflect at it it has evolved uh, and looping in to my previous answer the why is so important we started with a small segment of making a difference for visually impaired person's life by making content accessible in the process jahamne isko because selling is really important as a founder you need to know how to sell your own products before you can expect somebody else to come and do it for you so when we started uh, setting up kibo in institutions educational institutions not only were they looking at it from a perspective okay, how can kibo help the two or three or five visually impaired students studying in my institute they were also because it delivers the output in audio they were also expecting acha mere paas uh, content in Marathi, can I listen to it in English? I have non-Marathi speaking students in my institution. So those gave us an insight of how product needs to evolve for this market, the education market. So first we listened, then the ability to translate also came in. In the process, people started digitizing content. They already had a lot of scanned documents, they wanted to make it accessible. So then digitize came in uh, with the advent of audiobooks everybody wanting to access content through audio so the ability to audioize was added so that product evolved again to suit that geography uh, to suit that customer segment and like post shark tank especially when people also started in the like more than six years now in this like building 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 the tech capabilities now we are at a stage not only the core segment of education, but we are also able to fulfill some of the core industry requirements of powering their businesses uh, to automate some of their workflows and processes. So, as an entrepreneur, you should not fall in love with the idea on day one. Because if you have it, then you will not look at the other things that are happening around you. So, Cheese change hogi, the product you think will work today may not work tomorrow. Things change, market change, everything changes. But the only constant is you and your passion of why do you want to do what you are doing currently. So I think that and I've been lucky enough to have Akshita also along this journey because sometimes you feel oh why am I doing this? So the other person lifts you up. 
uh, uh, vice versa. So this journey is all about balances. I see entrepreneurship as a, a, a complex equation with too many variables. Okay, again two sides of the equation. You change one variable, like you change your tech stack, your team members, the people you work with, the segment you're working towards your product. Could change karo, the output changes. Uh, or isko change karo, to this you have to change this thing now. So it's all there's no right answer. You jo aap karte rehte, we are just trying to balance the equation to see what fits fine. And uh, in the process of balancing these equations, you're just playing a game. Uh, a slightly complex game, just that. And you have to choose which game you want to play. If you are product build a product, then you are playing a different game. If you are trying to sell to a particular set of customers in India, there's a different game. If you are selling internationally, a different game. So you choose the game that you want to play. Uh, it's with live actors, real money, real infrastructure. Sif sab cheez real hai. Pahle computer mein khelte tha, like this is a real life game. But ha, matlab you don't take things very seriously as well because cheeze badalne wali hai. Uh, and hence this depression, burnout. Matlab us level tak nahi you hustle, but only to an extent because at the end of it you think it's whatever it is. I've done my best, and this is what. Oh, satisfaction varna aata hi nahi. You earn hundred rupees or you earn hundred crores. You are never satisfied. Huh? So you, I think you balance it out at the end of the day. So that's my belief and my definition of entrepreneurship that I think. Uh, so uh, that you've talked to us how Shark Tank had probably changed a few things for you. Uh, could you also tell us how, how decision making at uh, Kibo happens as in how does Kibo really operate? So if you could just share some more insights about your own operations and uh, yeah. your decision making process. How does how do things work at Kibo? Sure. I think in terms of decision making, uh, we are fairly a democratic company. So it's like, you know, hiring the right people and know that they will decide the best. So I think we have been, you know, in a position where we have not hired for talent, but people who can do hard work, smart work, are curious to learn new things and take full ownership of the work that they are doing, they are delivering. And that is what you know, has made the decision making process more efficient because I might not be correct at Take, making decisions yeah. all the time but I know if I, we hire smart people in the team they would somehow figure out what needs to be done so I think a very uh, a good team of smart people with us who know what they are doing and that helps the whole process in terms of some of the critical decisions I think that we have taken in this journey is of course what is the problem that we are solving when we build a product for that, finding the first customer, uh, of course, they may or may not buy your product. Then how do you make your product in a, or present it not as a product that you're selling to them, but as a solution to some of their problems. And that's how sales started to kick in. And of course, every single day you have to take a lot of decisions. Whom should you hire? How do you uh, get more revenues? Who should we partner with in terms of all of that? But I think uh, critical thinking, um, sometimes believing in your instinct, because a lot of times I feel, is this the most logical thing? And then I tell myself, maybe this is the most dill logical thing. <laughs> and I ended up, uh, you know, because some of the decisions cannot be taken by just the, you know, the mind, but, you know, a combination of your mind and your heart, because your instinct is a combination of the experiences you have had in life and that all comes together to help in the right decision making. Yeah. So people and so kya karte hai, whenever suppose we are hiring for a particular role, through these six, seven years of experience, we do guide them initially that this is what works. So you start here. Take care. But for the people who have stayed with us for like more than four years now, the way they've evolved is they start with, well, we can guide them initially, but then they start thinking on their own. Akshita Bonin ne ye kaha hai, but then I think based on my learning so far, this is what will work and not what something that they are recommended. So they start thinking, so their thought process and their experience in that domain goes beyond what we know. 
विच इज वॉट वी नीड बिकॉज इन अ स्मॉल टीम अगर हम ही सब कर लेते थे वॉट इज द यूज ऑफ द टीम राइट सो यू वॉन्ट पीपल टू आउट थिंक अस वी वॉन्ट टू बी रिप्लेसेबल वी डोंट वॉन्ट टू डू आज जो हम चीज़ कर रहे हैं वी डोंट वॉन्ट टू डू दैट सेम थिंग टू मंथ्स फ्रॉम टूडे बिकॉज वेन वी हैव मोर टीम मेम्बर्स टेकिंग केयर ऑफ दीज थिंग्स वी फोकस ऑन अदर बिगर थिंग्स एंड दैट्स हाउ द कंपनी इवेंचुअली ग्रोस बिकॉज दैट इंडिविजुअल एज अ इंटर्न और एज अ फुल टाइम एम्प्लॉय ऑल्सो ग्रोज बिकॉज इज ऑल्सो रिस्पॉन्सिबल नाउ सो वो भी ग्रो करते हैं इन टर्न द कंपनी ऑल्सो ग्रोज एंड हेंस वेन पीपल से स्टार्टअप हैज मोर लर्निंग अपॉर्चुनिटीज बिकॉज ऑफ द फंडामेंटल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द कंपनी वेर इफ इंडिविजुअल्स विद इन दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आर नॉट ग्रोइंग द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डजेंट ग्रो बाई डिफॉल्ट सो वी अंडरस्टूड दैट एज अ प्रोसेस एंड बेटिंग ऑन द राइट पीपल हु मे नॉट बी द मोस्ट टेक्निकली साउंड बट टू हैव दैट लर्निंग केपेबिलिटी एज अक्षता सेट और द क्यूरियस माइंड सेट कि आज मुझे नहीं पता बट आई एम विलिंग टू पुट इन दी एफर्ट टू लर्न अराउंड अबाउट दिस थिंग एंड दिस इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू परस्यू फॉर अ फोर्सिएबल फ्यूचर कि दो तीन साल तक आई वॉन्ट टू वर्क ऑन दिस एक्सटैक या मुझे मार्केटिंग डिजिटल मार्केटिंग एक्सप्लोर कर ऐसा नहीं कि जिंदगी भर यू मे स्टिक टू दिस थिंग बट एटलीस्ट फॉर द फोर्सिएबल फ्यूचर यू आर विलिंग टू इन्वेस्ट योर टाइम एफर्ट एंड एनर्जी टू बिकम स्लाइटली स्किल्ड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर डोमेन एंड आई थिंक वी आर टीम ऑफ फोर्टीन पीपल एज ऑफ नाउ जस्ट ग्रोइंग एंड स्केलिंग एज we grow as a company so i think this this has become the core philosophy of how we operate and uh, how we grow as a team okay that that really sounds interesting in fact this is something which we teach our students as well that become entrepreneurs there yes. are entrepreneurs on whose businesses you are working but become your own entrepreneurs yes. within yeah. the uh, function that you are uh, heading yes. so in fact uh, moving on uh, at gibs we have something called as innovation research and entrepreneurship program So basically, it is a very popular program that we uh, have uh, here at GIBS called as the IRE program, and it is also aligned with the Business Mastery program. Mm. So what we do here is that students come up with their own future-ready ideas, and there are mentors who support them in their ideas and who help them understand how we can become better. So in fact, the business ideas are so good that they are investment-ready and they are scalable as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, since you both are yourself young entrepreneurs, and I'm sure uh, a lot of our own students and our viewers would derive a lot of inspiration from you. So could you share uh, some, you know, uh, maybe some ideas or tips that you could share with them as, uh, you know, entrepreneurs? As in, what is it that they could do, uh, or what would probably could be the factors which would result in the success of entrepreneurs, and how can they uh, actually start their entrepreneurial journey? Sure. Um, I would like to divide this into three key learnings that we have had. So, or personally, I have also had on this journey. First is uh, never shy away from learning new things, uh, because sometimes you. Because I started as a software engineer. Over this journey, I have evolved from uh, you know writing codes to making business proposals. So the complete shift from. you know um engineering or software development to today my po- work portfolio or my day to day is fundraising sales business development team building uh, of course technology is like the core or heart of it but then there is so many things that you have to learn on this journey so first thing that i have learned is never shy away from learning anything uh, just be curious be open uh second is i um, mean of course on the business side of things there is there is a lot um don't i mean don't fall in love with your idea see what the market needs because you build your best but user experience is your real litmus test so if you're building something always stay close to your customers your users know what you are really building uh, who are you building it for will they pay for this that's yes. the most important and fundamental thing and why will they only buy from you i mean what what's so unique about it so that's on the second one and i think the third one which is more on the softer side of things is uh do it only if you are really passionate about something so if uh, i mean you know how bonnie also shared uh, don't do it because it's a fomo do it because you are really passionate about some problem that you can solve you can uniquely solve in this world and do it in a way that you are doing putting your more than 100% to it learning on the way 
getting right people on board, partnering with right people, getting the right mentorship from your college or institution, your mentors and guides and always stay in touch with them because I think what we have earned in the last six years is relationships, people who have been with us since day one and or maybe even day 100 but never left us. So I think a relationship will always be the key to your business. Maybe you know you, you might not leverage those relationships or be in touch with them today but just stay close because businesses are all about good partnerships. Yeah. I think Akshita summarized it beautifully. Um, two things I'll just add from my side as entrepreneurs we are uh, in love with our own self in a way that we have to do हमें सब आना भी चाहिए तो वो मतलब एक ego आ जाता है as engineers मतलब मैं अपनी बात करता हूँ ठीक है so it's very difficult to say no कि नहीं I don't know this let me go and reach out to X Y Z person or this faculty member or this mentor that I have to ask for help कि I don't know this thing can you help me with this they may or may not uh, give you the solution which can right directly fit into your existing problem but at least they will give you a direction and in the process when you try, uh, continue to work on that you will meet more and more people and the inputs that you will get will make you much more robust than if you just try to google things such a how do you uh, uh, give ESOPs to employees if, if, that's, if, that's a, if that's a question that you are struggling with because many of these things in world you are not the first one solving them it's been solved already there are, uh, there are people who are who have done their masters phds around it there you won't believe there are more people willing to help only if you go and ask for help so yeah. yeah. fundamental hai to aap go out ask for help that's the first thing that i've learned uh, akshita is good at it i'm learning from her but yeah second thing is um, that sales mindset is also important while building products is our comfort zone every single time when you are try thinking in kya main isko is tarike se banao go and speak out speak with the customer uh, you should spend more time out than in your office as a founder you know product building clear you will eventually have team members who build the product and those things again i said known things people have built products very complex product also but kya banana hai kyun banana hai aur kaun iske liye paise dega is really important so the more you speak with the right customers the better insights you will get and jo aapki product development ki journey hai na wo reduce ho jayegi because the only thing that you don't want to end up is end up building a very classy version of the product and find out ki this doesn't work because of some simple one two three things because that rework will take a lot of time, effort, energy and money especially when you are cash strapped initially so as much as you talk about it, clarity will come whether this is something that I want to pursue even or not Which, or one last thing is in this journey there are a lot of no's that you will have to say and a few yeses both opportunities will come ये भी कर ले ये भी कर ले हाँ ये भी सही लग रहा है ये भी सही लग रहा है यू हैव टू से नो टू लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स ओनली सो दैट यू कैन फोकस योर टाइम ऑन अ फ्यू थिंग्स दैट मैटर टू यू एंड फॉर द कस्टमर और द पर्सन दैट यू बिल्डिंग इट फॉर तो ये थोड़ा कॉन्ट्रेन ओपिनियंस हैं बट दिस इज वॉट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट स्पेशली अर्ली ऑन इन योर जर्नी आई वुड लाइक टू एड समिंग हेयर जस्ट हाउ वन यू मैं I think profitability should be baked into uh-huh. every business model because a lot of times people say ki we have built something, we'll scale it and profits will come. It doesn't just happen that way. So profitability, business model, how will you scale, how will it sustain? So I think profitability, there's no you know shortcut for that. You have to think through it. Money is the key. I mean, of course, a lot of we also started this as a passion project, and it just—it's been six years of us being bootstrapped and profitable as well. But that was because from day one we were sure that if we are doing this even for impact, yeah. and we want to scale this impact, it will only scale if we are able to sustain our business, sustain our profits, rather 
grow and uh, sustain and grow our profits and our business that's only when we not just impact uh, you know the people that we want to work with in india but also across the globe so profitability and uh, you know money should always be on your head and in fact listening to you both i think you bring in a lot of maturity as well the way you've been talking about how the entire idea came up and how you've been scaling it up and the i think the viewers when they listen to you i'm sure you they will also look at the kind of maturity that you uh, bring in uh, into the business yes. and into the whole idea about being an entrepreneur so um, though a lot has already been shared by you but then if any last few tips that you could give to our viewers any last takeaways from uh, today's podcast something that you would like to you know summarize and take away for our viewers from today's podcast okay so from my side they just a one word takeaway i mean if you forget everything that i uh, we talked about today <laughs> one word should be perseverance so if you are really you have started this journey with a strong passion purpose you really want to make this big uh, no business can be made in a day it at least takes 3 years to you know uh, reach reach a point where you start making money and 10 years to really say you know now we have we have a fairly good commercial business and um, this journey can be hard lot of challenges hurdles ups and downs uh, things i mean you you would have a work order come in and you are super jumping on it and the next day it's like the you know the partner backed out i mean you never know how things will change and shape up your journey but just persevere just adhere to the purpose that you started this with of course do a lot of pivots uh, as challenges come your way but stay the course so if you are able to really give at least 10 years of your life to something that's when it will start to you know bloom flowers and uh, show results so just persevere stay the course uh, face the challenges with smile uh, get back every time you you are put put down and uh, in a in a much stronger way just keep pivoting keep building and uh, happy entrepreneurship yeah entrepreneurship again like i said i leave you with this one single thing that i thought would be relevant entrepreneurship is not something that you see on tv or read at the articles on the internet about the billion dollar fundraisers and all these things those are just what surfaces you know if you're looking for instant gratification ki aaj maine kuch banaya i know it's working i go out i get a couple of media coverages and i have arrived and the instant gratification chahiye i don't know something magical next month something will come up no it won't happen uh, if you're doing it just because anybody else is doing it you, you won't sustain it in the long run i'm telling you all the knows ki agar aap uh, you're doing it for the fomo you're doing it to make thinking that you'll make a good financial like acha paisa kamaoge isme kamaoge maybe yes but not like immediately you need to put in the hours uh, the effort the perseverance kyunki dekho i talked about the equation right aapko itne cheeze balance karke chalni hai product team customers stakeholders investors ho to investors that it's very draining and if you are not resilient enough and the why is not strong enough to aap succumb kar jaoge uh to before you start out before you sign on the mca portal of registering the company under your name think about all the reasons of pehle apne aap ko puchho mujhe ki ye nahi karna what are the reasons why should i not do entrepreneurship and in spite of all the reasons if you still find one reason ki nahi bhai there are 99 knows but one reason as to why nahi mujhe ye karna hai then you jump into it and if you jump into it aap ek agreement sign kar rahe ho apne sath hi ke bhai this will be difficult this will be chaotic uh, there will be jitne highs honge utne hi lows honge every day is new uncertain as i said nobody is telling you what to do ये सारी चीजें होगी बट इफ यू एंजॉय द प्रोसेस इट इज द मोस्ट रिवॉर्डिंग थिंग दैट कैन हैपन तो दैट्स व्हाट आई वांट टू लीव यू गाइस विद एंड ऑल द बेस्ट एंड एक चीज 
आई थिंक आई कैसे फील फ्री टू आस्क फॉर हेल्प यू कैन रीच आउट टू अस कुछ ना कुछ तो हम हेल्प कर ही पाएंगे आपको मे बी गेटिंग यू द फर्स्ट कस्टमर इफ यू द स्टार्टिंग आउट और हेल्पिंग यू जस्ट थिंक थ्रू सम ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट यू नो आर एक्सपीरियंस हैज डॉट अस सो फील फ्री टू रीच आउट टू अस दैट द सेकेंड थिंग दैट आई वॉन्ट टू लीव यू Thank you so much. That has been so entertaining, so exciting, and so enriching as well. And I hope uh, our audience today, uh, all our listeners and viewers today, got to hear a lot of good things from our heroes today, uh, Ms. Akshita and Mr. Goli. And I'm sure there's a lot of takeaways that you all also have from uh, today's podcast. And um, do make sure that you like, subscribe, and share our uh, channel. And do comment on our channel, which is at the rate GIDS Business School Bangalore. And don't forget to follow us on various social media handles. Uh, please follow us at at the rate GIBS IIA Talks and at the rate GIBS Business School. This is your host Pallavi Vyas signing off from today's uh, podcast. And we'll see you soon with another podcast uh, very soon uh, that will be shared with you all. So thank you so much and do follow us uh, at GIBS Business School Bangalore, where innovation meets inspiration.